Hey everyone, welcome back to Raising Unicorns by Harmon Brothers. And in today's episode, we discuss the additional value great video can add to your business that goes beyond the benefits we often talk about, like increasing sales through direct response advertising. Unicorns are real. In the past eight years, Harmon Brothers has helped raise five unicorns. Yes, that's five companies with a billion dollar valuation, with at least six more companies right on the cusp of becoming unicorns. Here on Raising Unicorns, we share the lessons we've learned to help you grow your business by tens or even hundreds of millions of dollars. It's time to start raising a unicorn of your own. Hey, you guys. At the end of this podcast, we have a free gift for entrepreneurs and in-house marketing teams. We want you to take advantage of what you learn in this episode and put it to use as soon as possible so that you can finish out the year strong and start next year with a bang. So if you're building a business and you're ready to use video to take it to the moon, be sure to stick around to the end. One quick note though, this offer is exclusively for entrepreneurs and in-house marketing teams. I know there are agencies out there and video production companies who listen to this podcast and we love you. You take our Harmer Brothers University courses, you drive us to do better. But we believe that if you're going to go out and compete, that it's fair to ask you to pay your dues. So again, this offer exclusively for entrepreneurs and in-house marketing teams. So please stick around to the end of the episode and we'll get you all the information that you need for that. All right, so let's talk about how video helps build value in your business and how you can use it to build additional value in your business. This episode should be helpful to any marketer out there who needs to make a case for investing time or marketing dollars or just the sheer effort that goes into creating video content. If you have to justify that to your manager, your boss, whatever, this episode should give you some of that uh, ammunition to talk to them about or maybe just light a fire in you uh, to get serious about video marketing. There's many of you out there who already know you need to lean into video and maybe this will just give you a swift kick in the pants to get serious about it. So, I would say back in the day, um, say early 2000s, it was okay to sort of sit back and run marketing campaigns that didn't include video. Video at the time, I think, was often just kind of a nice to have, or maybe you'd create a video campaign and, and run it a couple of times a year or something like that. Um, it's interesting. In in 2015, there's a stat from WiseHow that says only 33% of marketers reported that video gave them a positive ROI. So that's not great, right? If you're investing in video and you only come out ahead 33% of the time, you probably stand to lose a decent amount of money. But things have shifted and we'll talk about that a little bit. In fact, almost, what was that, 2015? So about eight years, here we are, and we've seen a massive shift towards video in every aspect of marketing to the point where I'd say a large number of serious marketers are actually approaching campaigns as what I'd call video first. And that's similar to the way that uh, there's been a shift in web design to what we call mobile first, which is where you start with the mobile version of a landing page or of a website, and then you build out the other kind of the other components uh, for desktop, tablet, etc. The idea is that you start with the piece that is most central, uh, maybe most important, but most used and then you add the other necessary pieces to it. So when you think of video first, you're saying, okay, we know that this campaign is going to rely on video, and then we're gonna add other things to that campaign, uh, You know, whether it's billboards like you saw us do with The Chosen, whether it's banner ads or email campaigns and different things like that. But we take this concept and we put it into a video and then we build other pieces of the campaign around that concept, which is housed in this video. And that's the way I would say a majority, at least of the, the type of marketers that we deal with here at Arm Brothers, that's just the way we approach things now because video is so powerful. And we'll talk about why that is. In a way, this shift has become necessary. It's been enabled by increased broadband speeds, by even uh, mobile data networks going to 5G. And we, we just have so much ability now to use video in ways that we didn't used to that it's almost become necessary for brands to use video in order to engage with their audience. In fact, certain social networks or platforms are built solely around video 
Uh, if you look at TikTok as an example, you don't post pictures on TikTok. It's all video content. Instagram is increasingly becoming that way. YouTube has already been that way. Facebook, we find that the most reach uh, that posts get include video. Facebook themselves has have said that it's all about video. And so although Facebook launched native video back in 2007, most of the videos on Facebook at the time were just links to YouTube videos until around 2015 is when video really started to pick up on Facebook as well. Um, So it's wild to compare that 33% of marketers who said video was profitable to the percentage that say it's profitable today, which if you were to guess, you might say, oh, it's probably doubled. We're at 66% or something like that. But that number from a study, again, by Wiseau said that 87% of marketers who use video say it's generating a positive ROI, which is incredible. So an important note before we move on, and this comes from another study, this one by HubSpot. They noted that only 20% of video marketers consider sales as a measurement of success. Think about that. 27% of video marketers look at sales and say, okay, this video or these videos that we're creating are solely intended to produce sales. So obviously there are a lot of other reasons to be creating videos that that other marketers are seeing out there, right? But what's interesting is kind of the flip side of that because although only 27% say that they consider sales the measurement of success, 81% report that video marketing has improved their company's bottom line. So that means that videos have a positive impact even if the focus remains on metrics other than sales. So the video content that you create, if you do it right, has the ability to not only generate those sales that we all like to see, but to inject value into your business in really incredible other ways. And we're gonna talk about a few of them in this episode, but first I wanted to talk for a minute about why video is so effective at creating that value. Okay, so number one, video is the best tool for getting attention. The psychology of video is an interesting one. There's a a couple of quick things that I just want to hit on. Um, But one of them is taken from a book called Video Marketing by John Mowat. And he talks about ganglion cells in your eyes. And they detect it. They do a couple of different things. But one of those is that they detect movement. And obviously video moves. And so what happens when people are viewing video is that that movement is one of the things that gets attention. If you think of um, setting your phone, uh, you know, maybe it's over on, uh, on your nightstand and a little message notification pops up. Somehow, even though it's way over on the other side of the room, your eye sees that almost instantly. That piques your attention and you feel like you have to go and grab that phone, right? I think personally that that's one of the reasons why it's by some people considered rude to keep your phone on a table when you're in a conversation uh, with somebody or maybe you're eating with them because they know from their own experience that if that phone is on the table and a notification comes up or there's some kind of movement over there, that your attention is going to shift from them and the conversation, that time that you're spending with them to whatever's going on over on that mobile device. So that's That's not a great thing, particularly in social situations, but it does prove the point that when it comes to getting someone's attention, video is, and that movement that is a a trait of video is so good at capturing that attention. Okay, the next one I want to mention, video is the best at conveying emotion. We just talked about movement. Um, you have changing expression with video. So the back and forth of dialogue or even body language and other interaction between people is conveying this motion in a way that a static image or certainly copy can't do. There are components to video, that movement, those interactions that do a better job, if done properly, in conveying emotion, which is one of the things that we love so much about video. And don't forget, when we talk about emotion, don't forget about music. With video, you have the ability to have, uh, we kind of talked about that dialogue, but also the emotion that comes from a music bed or, or a music track can be so impactful, not only in branding, but just to bring out uh, the emotion that you're trying to convey in that message. So a wide range of emotion is possible in video through uh, changing scenes, 
This lends itself especially well to problem solution formats and demonstrations, although there are other ways to do that than copy and photography and things like that. That changing interaction, those changes of scenes, that music, um, doing an actual demonstration where you see something working, nothing can compete with video when it comes to that sort of thing. A third one, video is the best at telling a story. So that's closely related, I think, to what we just talked about with conveying emotion. Um, You're listening to a podcast right now, and podcasts are great. I love them, listen to them all the time. But how many times have you had to stop and rewind a podcast? Maybe even this one. I know I can be kind of hard to follow, and maybe that's the reason that you're doing it. But from my own personal experience, I will be listening to a podcast and podcasts frankly lend themselves well to multitasking, whether that's driving or maybe it's uh, something else you're doing in your workday. And suddenly you realize, wait a second, I haven't captured anything that I've listened to in the past five minutes. And so you've got to go back and rewind and kind of get back up to speed. Now, on the other hand, How often does that happen when you're watching a video? Admittedly, if you're multitasking, it's probably happened to you, but it happens, at least to me, so much more often when I'm listening to something as opposed to watching something. So really, for that reason and many others that we've talked about, video is just the best. Okay, one more that I want to talk about here. Tangibility. And that seems like a weird one when we're talking digital video, but the fact is that video is a format that involves multiple senses. This is called multi-sensory learning, and it increases both comprehension and retention. A lot of schools, uh, even elementary schools, are shifting to this multi-sensory approach to learning because they find that it helps kids not only be more interested in something, but it helps them to understand things better and it helps them to remember things longer. So in video, we've talked about some of these, but you have the visual picture, you have the uh, the auditory experience. I'm still waiting for smell-a-vision and hopefully eventually taste-a-vision. I think in, in some instances, those would be nice. Another, depending on the content, might not be as nice. But it's, the, it's, it's all these other feelings. If you're reading something, you know, it's kind of going into your eyes. So you're seeing it and then you're getting imagination uh, into that. And so that's great. But when you can provide all of this, uh, all of this information through video rather than making people think to understand what's going on, it just becomes that much more powerful. Another thing, when you think of uh, of kind of that feeling or these other senses that can be included in video, in a theater with really great sound, you can actually feel the vibrations, the rumblings and different things like that, that help you to have, again, that multi-sensory experience that helps things to be more impactful and more memorable. Now, Coming back to what I said, tangibility. Another interesting thing from the book by John Mowat that I talked about. This tangibility is a a factor in helping actually create desire. So when you're watching video, in most cases, I think today, uh, especially when you're watching video advertising, that's happening on your mobile device and you're holding it in your hand. Now, this is really interesting because from a psychological perspective, when you're holding something in your hand, it feels more like it's yours. And he makes the point that this extends to video ads. And so you can be watching a video on your mobile device when you're holding it in your hand can actually be more effective than watching it on a screen that you're not touching or have no physical contact with. So it's an interesting point. It took me into a couple of other ways of thinking and actually opportunities that I see for using video type content uh, in marketing. So when you think about augmented reality or even virtual reality, there are interesting marketing opportunities that I think we're maybe still a little bit early for. I'll give you a quick example. Kizik is an awesome shoe company. I won't take the time to explain why Kizik's are so great right now, but if you haven't checked them already, go to kizik.com. If you have never tried them, it might seem crazy to think that not having laces on your shoes will change your life, but take it from me. It will change your life. I don't wear anything but Kizik's anymore. They're just, they're that good. Anyway, I saw a while back that Kizik was experimenting with augmented reality and what they were doing was showing a Kizik shoe. You could use your phone to actually sort of see this shoe, if I recall, in this augmented reality where you could kind of spin it around and look at different parts of the shoe 
and even look at your own feet and see Kizik's on your feet, okay? There are other tools like that out there. In fact, if you look on some of the furniture websites, you can upload a photo of your living space and you can see the TV on the wall in your living space, or you can see what the couch would look like in your own living space. And again, I think it's, it's it to me seems like there's some great experimentation going on. It's maybe a little bit too early, but the reality is if you start experimenting with it now, once we get to the point where it becomes common, you'll already have built all those skills. You'll know sort of what you want to do with it. And then your users will be able to consume that just as they consume a regular video or image on your website today. And so I think there's huge opportunity in that. As one more example, at Harmon Brothers, we've experimented with a special camera that takes video in 360 degrees. And then on YouTube or other platforms, you can actually turn your phone or uh, you can just use your mouse to kind of go around and look at it. And frankly, it's, uh, it's not super exciting. The videos that we created when I was looking at them on my own phone uh, on YouTube, I was like, oh, you know, like interesting experiment, but I'm, I'm not really getting the pull of this thing. That changed as soon as I bought a VR headset. And just one night as I was kind of messing around with it, I was like, oh, let me go and look at our BTS where we had, um, we, we used a process trailer, which is basically where you have a car on a trailer that's pulled by a truck. And it, instead of using green screen and those sorts of things, you actually drive the car through, you know, the countryside or whatever. And you're able to get those real bumps in the road and, and uh, landscape moving past you and everything. And it looks real because... They're not necessarily driving, but for all other purposes, it's actually real driving. Anyway, we did a 360 degree behind the scenes video for that particular campaign. And when I was looking at that behind the scenes video through virtual reality goggles, it changed my whole perspective. It was incredible the way that you could look around, up, down, you know, look the direction the truck was traveling, or it, it was just a completely different experience than seeing it on your phone. And so not everybody has those headsets. It's probably a little bit early, but these are great things to be experimenting with so that you can have that creativity come in. You can start to have ideas of, oh, how could we do this thing differently? What would it be like if we incorporated some of these newer technologies into this campaign? And it will open you up to possibilities that will build value in your company over time. And eventually those sorts of things are gonna pay off. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about why video, why it's so important, why it is the, in my opinion, the best format for advertising. But let's talk a little bit now about actually how to use video. And there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. Most of you probably already have those ideas. So I'm gonna hit on these fairly quickly. And then I want to talk about a couple of examples and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap the podcast up. So how to use video. First of all, sales. Direct response advertising is fantastic at generating sales. That's what Harmon Brothers is known for. We like to talk about it as sales and branding in one video or in one campaign. And that's something that we do really well. And when we're talking about advertising, it's quite obvious that these videos need to drive sales. But that's not the only thing that you can use video for. I mentioned branding. Now, the difference between direct response advertising and advertising that's mainly focused on branding is that when you're doing branding, you're focusing more on feeling and brand promise and helping your audience to identify with the ideals of your brand. It's more of a long-term strategy. Since you're not putting money into this video and then getting money right back out of it through sales, it takes a longer term vision to realize the effect that that branding is going to have. And it requires consistency and investment. But because you're addressing a much larger market, it can have much larger ROI depending on if you're able to invest into that type of content. Now you can take it a step further and go to branded entertainment. Now, that's much like branding. There's still a connection to the brand, but it's much further removed from the sales process. The brand gets to participate in what's sometimes a cultural event, and the brand is simply attached to that rather than being the star of it. The great thing about this kind of thing is that we're no longer talking about advertising. 
And as people become more and more, I would say, suspicious of advertising, the branded entertainment gives you a way to reach these audiences and still put your brand in front of these people, but without all the skepticism and the eye rolling or or pushing that skip ad button. So branded entertainment is even a longer, more involved investment than even a branding video is. But as your brand grows and as you look to expand to new audiences, it's a great tactic to take. Okay, now the last one I want to talk about for just a minute is using video for instructional content or customer service. Now, customer service is a huge expense for many companies. And using video to help people use your product correctly or find answers to their questions will cut down on those costs. Not only will it cut down on those costs, but it will endear your customers to you because you've created content specifically for them to help them get the most out of the thing that they purchased. And so when you think of the different ways that you can use video, that's one that should just be a given that can continue to build that value in your business. Okay, so we've talked about why video and we've talked about how to use video. Now, I just wanna take your mind back to that stat that only 27% of video marketers consider sales as a measurement of success when they're creating videos. There's a story about a business where video not only helped them to sell product, but the video actually helped them to sell their business. In fact, I can think of at least four companies that Harmon Brothers has created right off the top of my head. We've created videos for these companies who were later acquired and sometimes very, very quick afterwards acquired by larger companies. And we don't take credit for that kind of success, but we hope that our content adds the kind of value both in the clarity of messaging, in increased revenue and market traction and differentiation that our content can bring the kind of value to a company that would make them acquisition targets if that's the goal of the company. So interestingly, I was listening to the Marketing Secrets podcast a month or so ago, and I heard Russell Brunson tell a similar story about a company that he purchased. And I want to play that clip for you now, and then we'll kind of wrap things up. Here's Russell. So ZoomaJuice is actually one of my friend's companies, and he launched this company, and um, I remember watching him, and he was so passionate about it, and he was having so much fun with it, and he's an amazing copywriter and marketer and everything, and I remember just watching his journey. And after he launched this, this green drink, um, one of my favorite things was the actual sales video. And so it's interesting. I contacted him later. I was like, dude, that video was so good. I'm like, who did it? Like, did you hire the Harmon brothers or something? He's like, he's like, no, here's who I hired. He's like, I wrote the scripts and we hired the actors and everything. And I said, how much did the whole thing cost you? Cause I knew what we had paid the Harmon brothers to do videos like this for us. And I don't remember exactly what he said. It was, it was multiple six figures he spent to create this, uh, the sales video. Have you guys ever heard the, um, the term a Rembrandt in the attic? So what that means is basically, imagine there's two people going to go purchase a house. They walk through the house like, oh, it's a nice house. It's probably worth $250,000. And, and everyone goes through the house, but then one person goes through the house and they're looking through and they go up in the attic and they open it up and all of a sudden they see an original Rembrandt. And they're like, oh my gosh, I know the value of that painting. That painting is worth millions and millions of dollars. And so they come back out and like, hey, I'll give you $4 million for this house. Or I'll give you $2 million, right? And the other person's like, This one were $250,000. But for the other person, because they know the value of the house, they know there's a Rembrandt in the attic, they're willing to spend way more, right? For me, when I saw this funnel, I was like, that video is the Rembrandt in the attic. Like that video is so valuable. Like I know how good it is. Uh, The business ran for a couple of years and then, um, and they ended up shutting the site down. And it was down for a year or two. And I remember, I I always remember that video. I'm like, man, that video is so good. Like that alone was worth so much money. And so I started messaging Luke. I was like, hey man, can I buy, um, can I buy Zuma juice? He's like, "Uh, why would you want to buy it? It's dead. I'm like, cause that video is so good. And, uh, we went back and forth for years, like literally a year after I kept messaging him. He's like, no, no, no. And finally when COVID hit, uh, one day I was bored and I was like, Luke, dude, don't you want free money? Like literally it's just sitting there on your hard drive somewhere. I will give you money. You can split it with your partners, whoever had it, and it'll be awesome. And uh, eventually he's able to acquire Zuma Juice. Okay, I love Russell and I love that story. Now, as he mentioned, we didn't create that video for Zuma Juice. Although it sounds like they spent plenty of money creating it, they probably could have hired us to do it. Uh, the point is, Having great video increases the value of your business across the board. Now, Russell talked about it as a Rembrandt in the attic. So how do you use video to accomplish the goals that you have for your company? I mean, think about the different ways we've already talked about you can use it. Obviously, you could use it to generate sales, to increase your revenue. 
You can use video to differentiate yourself from your competitors. You can decrease your customer service costs. You can decrease your returns or your refunds. What would it mean for you to be able to decrease the churn if you have some sort of business with a subscription model? You can use it to increase your wholesale orders or decrease your ad costs. And yes, when we talk about video, you can still generate positive ROI with video, even post iOS 14 and all the other crap that the algorithms and uh, and different social media platforms are throwing at us. In fact, let me mention quickly, we have a client, Skull Shaver, great client, fantastic product. We created an ad for them earlier this year. Uh, so post iOS 14, you know, and everybody's crying that the sky is falling and that kind of stuff. What did we do? We created a series of videos for them that told a story that illustrated the superiority of their product over other options. And it has decreased their cost per click by 40%. It has increased their international wholesale orders by over three times. And the campaign paid for itself in a couple of months. And from there on out, it's just generating cash for that company. So what would it mean to you to be able to decrease your advertising costs by 40%? What would that do for your business? And how long can you wait to take action on using video that will add value and increase the value of your company? Video is not new, but there will never be a better time to be successful with video than there is now. Man, I sound like a used car salesman at this point, don't I? Okay, I think you get the point. Let me give you two other stats that I think will, will kind of make the point here. And then let's talk about that free offer that we have for you. So uh, for marketers who incorporate video, there's a study by the Aberdeen Group that points to the fact that video, using video in your advertising on your landing pages increases your conversion rates by 34%. And we talked a little bit about the, the multi-sensory approach to learning and how that's a huge benefit of video. You get 95% message retention when using video as opposed to just 10% when reading the same message in text. So video can do things that no other medium can do and there is no reason to put it off any longer. There's no reason not to lean more into it. We're trying to do that here at Harmon Brothers, trying to get more video on our own pages on our website. Obviously, that's what we do for our clients. Sometimes uh, the cobbler's shoes have no... What is it? The cobbler's children have no shoes. But anyway, there's, I'll just say it one last time. There's never been a better time to really lean into video. All right. So let's end with this, the offer that I told you about at the beginning. Now you might've heard of Harmon Brothers University. It consists of eight specific courses that we actually use to train our own creative teams. And it can teach you everything we do at Harmon Brothers to create video marketing that converts. So the price for those courses ranges from about 200 bucks to over $2,000. But here's the deal. After listening to this episode, you're probably pretty convinced that you either need to start using video or you need to start using it more. And so we wanna help. So for entrepreneurs and in-house marketing teams, we're offering you a free Harmon Brothers University course with no catch. There's no upsell. This is not a webinar, no perfect webinars, nothing like as great as those are. Uh, All you have to do is visit harmonbrothers.com slash free course, okay? Set up a quick chat. When you get to that page, you set up a quick chat so that we can get you the best course of those eight courses for your business. Remember, there's eight of them. Uh, that each teach a different aspect of video marketing. And we'll get your account set up and your free course added. And that's really all there is to it. Again, it's harmonbrothers.com slash free course. Don't let another day waste away. We want your business to succeed. And we've proven over and over again that video is the way. So go to harmonbrothers.com slash free course and get your free course now. So there you have it. Thank you for listening. It's been fun chatting with you. We'll see you again next week on Raising Unicorns.